Uh, my name is Matt Abbott from the Nimson Fugs record label. Uh, welcome to this week's Insta session. Uh, I've loved doing these Insta sessions over the lockdown just to, to keep me sane. I'm really, really lucky. Some of the amazing poets who've joined me so far to perform some of their work. I'm really loving chatting to people about their process and how the lockdown's uh, impacted on them. Um, and it's been great to get loads of nice feedback from, from the viewers as well. I think people have enjoyed a little bite-sized 30 minute session just to watch on a, on a weekly basis, which is which is why I keep on doing it. Um, yeah, so this week I'm joined by Sharina Lee Satie. Uh, Sharina is from Bradford. Uh, she's one of the North's rising stars. She's making waves all over the country as well as in her native city. Uh, she's got a collection called She, being published by Verve Poetry Press in November, which is available to pre-order now. Um, she's partnered with loads of uh, events and organisations, including Bradford Literature Festival, uh, Ilkley Literature Festival um, and tons more. Uh, and yeah, I'm really happy and excited to welcome Sharina to tonight's session. So I'm just going to have a look, see, uh, try and remember the technology. Here we go. Da, 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 da. Ah, yeah, nice to see loads of people joining up. Good, good, good. Da, 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 da. I deliberately got my Leeds United stuff out just because of the rivalry. Hello, how are you doing? Hey, <laughs> I'm good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, good, thanks. Th oh, thanks so much for agreeing to do it. I'm really, really happy that you're on board, like. Yeah, no, no, I'm really glad to be here. Have you, um, I know this is your first Insta gig, but have you been doing quite a bit of online stuff over the last few months? Yeah, I've been doing lots of Zooming and um, things like that, but I've never done Instagram, so it's my first time doing Instagram, yeah. It's a bit easier. It's all right, isn't it? It's just right. that. <laughs> That's all you've got to do. Yeah. There's no mics on, mics off. It's cool. Hello, Helen. Oh, you're from Leeds. Yeah, yeah, cool. Um, yeah, nice one. So, how has the last few months been for you, then? Have you been, have you been all right? Have you been writing a lot, or? Um, well, the first few weeks, I kind of started writing quite a lot. Um, I wanted to write lots of negative stuff because I was feeling quite bitter, you know, about being locked down and everything. But I kept it positive just because I didn't want to put my vibes out there on the people, and everyone's kind of feeling negative anyway. So I wanted to try uplift everybody yeah. a little bit. Um, but then I kind of like just cooled down and um, yeah, settled into it a bit, I think, yeah. It was so weird, wasn't it, that first few weeks, like when you could, obviously, I think, I actually think it's a bit harder now, you know, like half and half, like can I do that, can I not do that? Um, but yeah. yeah, I was curious to see how you responded as a writer, because some people have said they've just had a, like a fog above their head and they just can't get creative. So it's nice to know that you started writing a lot um, at the start, yeah. that's cool. Um and yeah, I know what you mean about the negativity. Like, I, I love the way that your poetry tackles certain issues. And it, you do always, even when you're talking about serious stuff, you do always have this lovely positive aura about you. So I think that's really important that you did that, definitely. Thank you. Um, did, do you think you might have, not that I'm putting pressure on, but do you think you might have any projects that might come out of it? Like, uh, have you started writing about stuff that you'd not written about before or anything like that? Or Yeah, I think... Well, I kind of try not to write political, but it always pops up in poetry, I think. Um, so yeah, these pieces that I've not shared online, that I probably will share it up in mics. I think it's probably better to share it with a crowd than share it, I don't know, maybe online. It might just be a bit too negative, I don't know. Um, but yeah, um, I, yeah, I suppose you've got to be a bit careful with your audience as well when you're sharing certain things. Um, but yeah, I know yeah. up in mic people kind of appreciate it. That's interesting, actually, like, because I guess we've all had to start thinking a lot more about what we share online. And like you say, like an audience in a room, sometimes you might do like an angry political poem and you feel the room lift and it's that solidarity. Whereas online, like you say, because it's a bit more detached, it's different. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm interested. Yeah. And I guess that, that will affect how we write, I suppose, the next few months as well. So I'm, I'm, it's interesting to hear you say that. Definitely. Um, yeah, there's pros and cons, isn't there? Like, obviously, I'd rather, you know, I love being in a room with people, but then being able to chat to you tonight, just chilled on Instagram, it's, yeah. it's nice, isn't it? It adds different, yeah. uh, it opens the doors up, I think, definitely. Definitely. Um, I've really cool, enjoyed, yeah. So... Sorry, go on. No, I'm just saying, I've really enjoyed being able to connect with people globally. Yeah. Like, yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Not being yeah. able to do that, yeah. Yeah, you've done quite a bit of, you've done some international gigs, haven't you, I've seen? Yeah, yeah. This. So you've got She coming out with Verve in November. Has that been a long time coming or has that been quite a, uh, in terms of um, like the content in there? Well, it's been since like the beginning of the year. So like um, originally we were deciding on next year, but then there was like 
and they thought, oh no, we can kind of like push it for this year. And because I've got so much work already done and completed and, you know, just like a huge thing, like, yes, let's go for it. Nice, nice. So is it a, is it a body of work that's been built, you've been building up for a while? Or did you sort of like write a lot of it in quite a short period of time? Um, I'd say over the last three years, so it's work from the last three years um, and some new stuff. But it's kind of like we've worked on the poems that are probably, I don't know, I don't like saying the best stuff, but some of the best poetry. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, I'm, I'm really looking forward to reading it. And they are a great publisher, obviously, like, so sounds yeah, good. Definitely. Cool. Um, do you fancy sharing us a, a poem or two? Yeah. Um, I wrote this one quite recently, actually. Um, it's just, I've seen a quote and it's so true. It's about people being broken. And I really connect with people that have had like struggles or are struggling. Um, so I wrote this poem called Broken. Broken. Let me stand with the lost and the broken. The people whose voices are unspoken. Let me raise my vocal cords in their silence. Then wave screeching like sirens. I stand with those hidden rocks disguised as diamonds. A little rough around the edges, grounded deeply from the earth. The ones who don't realise what their own life is worth. I'd rather stand with the broken, the needy, the ones who silently scream, hear me. I'd rather walk with the lost, the ones who suffered misfortune at every cost, yet still rise up like tomorrow's sunset, like tomorrow's full moon. Those who value life and have not been fed from a silver dipped spoon. I'd rather drink from the open sky, listening to the hardship of those who cry, who struggle to make ends meet but eventually get by. The ones who don't bullshit to fit into society's norm. The only generation left of the human form. People that are in need of a helping hand, yet you're giving a life beating heart. One that's dissected into little pieces, which releases more love that can ever be found. I'd rather surround myself with the broken, because the truth will always be spoken, and the respect will always be there. No hidden hypocrisy, just people who genuinely care. I'd rather stand with the broken. Thanks. Beautiful. Yeah, I love that. I love, Thank I, you. Yeah, that's, there's so many beautiful lines in there. Like, I'd rather drink from an open sky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you wrote that quite recently, did you say, like in, in lockdown? Yeah, just the other day, yeah. Other yeah. day? Right, straight out of the kitchen. That's great. <laughs> that's yeah. I, 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 yeah, I've, that's what I love about these sessions. We do get some. I do get some new, quite new, new poetry shared, and it's it's buzzing. Marianne says beautiful. Nice, nice, nice. Good, cool. I was. Um, I'm interested to hear what you think about Instagram actually, because uh, you keep. I keep seeing these articles uh, saying that like Insta poetry is like the worst thing ever or whatever. And I, I personally, I love Insta poetry, and I know that you you do share stuff yeah. on Instagram quite a lot, don't you? Um, so yeah. what do you what, what 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 do you reckon? What do you think about it? Um, I think it's a good way to network and it's a good way to market your own poetry. Um, I think these days you've got to be kind of careful what you do put out there. So like, I used to write longer pieces and share that, and I just feel like if you're putting snippets of your work out there, you, you know, you, you're sharing um, your stuff with other people and it's getting to, it's reaching you know, it's reaching a lot more than you'd reach on social media. Like on Facebook, I find you've got to flash it out in different groups and share it a little bit more. But on Instagram, you put it there with a few hashtags and it reaches quite a lot of people. And, you know, I don't mind it, me. I think it's a positive way to share your work. I think so. And I think a lot of people go to Instagram to read poetry as well. Like, they, yeah. they don't, you know, like Facebook, they might stumble across it, whereas Instagram's a bit of a destination, in it? And... Um, I don't know about you as well, but I've, I've sort of found that uh, I'll share just a snippet from a work in progress just to sort of like test the waters. It's like a little litmus test in it, you know, just to see curi out of curiosity how people respond. Yeah, good. Well, I'm, I'm glad you yeah. do it because I think, I think Insta poetry is great, to be honest. Um, yeah. Obviously, we're on Instagram, aren't we? But... <laughs> <laughs> and it also, I think you, you get a lot of, diff you know, it's, it's a variety of generations that are on Instagram. So you do get a lot of younger generation as well that are reading stuff. Whereas I find on um, social media and Facebook, a lot of people, a lot of younger generation anyway, don't really get to see the poetry as much. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. Like, yeah, po Instagram's the cool place. Face Facebook's like where everyone's parents are. So it's a bit like, <laughs> yeah. 
you know. <laughs> oh, nice one, cool. Um, great, so I, I just want to do another. Yeah, um, all right, this one's probably, you've probably heard this one and it's an oldish one, but um, it's coming up to my mum's 60th birthday, so I thought I'd share this one and the effects of what drugs can have on people. It's called, Oh Mr Dealer. What is this crap you keep feeding her? I'm struggling to heal her. Oh dealer, do you know you are destroying my mother cell by cell? While you sit in your paradise, she sits in her hell. You fill your pockets with her next heroin fix. While counting your bank notes, see? She's dying a slow death while making you rich. Every time you make your sale pitch that this shit is a better batch and it's a better suited match to her requirements. Not retirement, as this is a one-way trip to death. And you commit murder every time she takes in a breath of that toxin that releases into her bloodstream. Your selfish act to fulfil your own needs is taking this to the extreme of my mother's life. While you nurture and love your own, you leave me in this life without my own. Oh, Mr. Dealer, you're destroying her life as I'm trying to heal her. As long as you're in her life, she will never live any kind of life. She's barely living, but keeps giving you every penny she gets until she's riddled in debt, a slave to you. To all that is left is her bones and skin tissue. You will keep pursuing her because she is your cash flow, your embedded embryo that you'll never ever let go because she is your cash flow. You see, Mr. Dealer, you soul stealer. You are taking my mother's life bit by bit, piece by piece. And the slowing of her heart beats. Too many ruining lies running drugs on the streets. Her blood is on your hands. Thank you. Wow. That's a, yeah, that, that's such a powerful piece. Like, I've, I've heard it before, but it never loses its impact. Um, yeah, such an important thing for you to talk about. Like, that must be, yeah. Do, do, you, um, do you sometimes find that poetry about what your mum went through, do you sometimes feel that it's difficult to share it or is it something that you always persevere and share no matter what? Or? Yeah, I'm kind of, I'm careful about how I select, well, what I select and what I do share, but just because I've, I know I've got to protect my loved ones as well, but I think it's needed. You know, there's so many people out there that are doing this and destroying people's lives and, you know, if that can just reach out to one person or just anything and just say, you know, like they're not alone and, yeah, it's needed, definitely. Yeah, totally. I think it's really brave that you do that. And it is needed, but, I, you know, I appreciate that it must be very difficult to, you know, if you're at a gig, like, get yourself into the mindset. Because it, I don't, I don't, it's such an intimate thing, isn't it? Like, I know it might be a poem that you've read, say, 50 times, but it's still such a personal yeah. thing. So I think I think you're really brave for doing that. I think it's, it's, it's amazing. Um Cool, yeah. Believe it or not, it's quarter. We're, we're halfway through, we're rifling oh. through, so I don't, I don't want to talk too much. So, like, um, if you've got any others you want to want to share, and we'll have another chat after you do another poem or two. Yeah. Um... Whatever you want to do, really. My main aim is that you're comfortable with what you're sharing, so however you want to do it, it's totally cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, I'll share this one. It's a bit like Hyde, and... So I'm a bit of a nature geek and I love, especially in lockdown, it's just been my kind of like therapy, just getting out there and yeah, being in the nature. So I wrote this poem called, It's More Than Nature For Me. It's more than nature for me. It's not just nature. It's more than green leaves weaved into branches. It's more than protruding vines that climb along the bark of the trees. It's more than what the eye can see. More than the whispers of grass that brush past your skin leaving its delicate flicker in your memory, its touch that prickles as much, leaving its imprint tattooed in your mind. It's more than nature that I find draws me closer, draws me into this whirlwind of peace. I drown in its heavenly scent, in its sweet silence, when my mind is exercised by nature's guidance. It's more than just being outdoors, where the mind explores a universe on earth, with a sky that swirls into a canvas, of blue and grey, leaving a ray of summer silk, breaking through the clouds. It's my place away from the crowds. It's more than nature. It stimulates my behaviour. It releases something inside of me that connects me more than the soil is connected to the trees. 
it's more than nature for me. Thank you. Nice. I oh, can go from that to that and still just really <laughs> both them. That's beautiful. Um, yeah, some really nice comments like Ian there saying it's brave and honest without the sugar coatings as well. Just saying, you know, you've had some great comments so far. Um, so you're a bit of a nature geek, I guess. Uh, is <laughs> climate change something that you write about or uh, something that's on your mind? I know it's a, such a difficult thing to comprehend, like, but. Yeah, I have wrote a few pieces on climate change and I've like done it at a few places where like there's been some, you know, um, demonstrations and stuff like that. And I think I'm just passionate about life in itself and humans and how we should all just, you know, chip in and look after everything really, you know, and just, I think if you're genuinely a good person, then we do that naturally. I just, yeah. You think so, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah cool um yeah I, I suppose as a poet it's sort of a your responsibility in some way to sort of commentate on stuff like climate change and uh politics and coronavirus but i know it can feel quite overwhelming can't it like um yeah but i love the way that you do it because you do sort of connect on that humanist level and like you know there's no point just repeating empty phrases or whatever you connect with people on that human level which hopefully will help pe make people sit back and take notice which is all the point really in it um lovely <laughs> and true especially during the pandemic there from marianne yeah nice nice cool um anyway sorry i'm waffling again <laughs> um, <laughs> two, if you want to share another yeah um okay so this one's it's a personal poem and it's about i suppose me accepting who I am and loving myself a bit more. And um, yeah, it's called Dear Body. Dear Body, I've hated you since I first noticed my breasts begin to form. As my hips started to widen and my ass started to transform. Every line, every curve, you cursed me. I've always hated you, body. You gave me a woman's body and I was just a child. You triggered eyes like light switches and sniggers and smiles. That contributed to me hating you. I've never loved you or liked you. I pretended to though many of times. Feeding my mind those eyes that I love the way my body curves and isn't just a straight line. How it's formed like the waves that bathe in my skin. I've always loved the sea, but I've never been able to love you body or escape you from me. I've been suffocating under your layers of skin and I've deeply tried to love you more than I've hated you. I've tried, trust me I've tried. But every time I said I look okay today, I lied. I hated the way my clothes always shown every damn curve. I'm sorry I've never given you the love you truly deserve. I've always complained and tried to change the way you are, leaving myself with these mental scars, that deep embedded cruel taunt, that I allowed to flaunt in and out of my thoughts, to torment my own self. I've never praised you once or thanked you for my health, for holding my internal organs in place, allowing my heart to be. At the very times you should have admitted defeat. You never gave in. Just kept loving me from within. Keeping my heart beating. My lungs breathing. You kept me alive. Dear body, thank you for this life. I'm sorry I have always sacrificed this life within. I'm learning to love you more. Every curve. Every imperfect flaw. I'm deeply trying to love you more. I'm trying to heal this body dysmorphia war. Starting from the roots, the inner core of the mind. Changing the thoughts of unkind with love. Love for you. I'm deeply trying to love you, body. Thank you. Lovely. I guess, um, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's really powerful. Uh, I know, obviously, that um, body confidence and body dysmorphia affects everybody, but there were elements of that poem that touched on, like, you know, femininity and, like, growing into a woman, perhaps, before you felt ready. Yeah. And I just wondered if that, because the title of a collection being She, if... Um, sort of femininity and womanhood was quite a common theme. Um, it, it, yeah. It, it, yeah. Well, she came from, it's always been my nickname as a child. So yeah. all my cousins and family always called me she. And, and it, it, it does have that like very feminine female um, title. And I just thought it just seemed perfect to something that's so like personal to be, yeah, to be called that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't realise that. That's cool. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, but yeah, that, that I know that poem, I'm sure, will resonate with um, a lot of people. So I just, just wondered how, how well that tied into the title. So 
yeah, cool. So I guess that title was something that didn't really need much thinking about, but it sounds like it sort of was a bit of a given. Yeah, well, I think, you know, I want something that just, like, kind of stands out. I know it kind of sounds weird being called, you know, your nickname She, but growing up it was just natural, you know, everyone was like, She, She. So just, yeah, it just kind of made sense to be that that needs to be it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, cool. And obviously, you know, uh, womanhood and, and f- you know, f- female voices in general, it's so so important that we have more um, voices, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It sounds, it sounds very uh, important and powerful and relevant. Um, so it's just after 10 to. So I reckon if you've got time for a couple more if you want, or if you just want to do one more in chat, it's entirely up to you. Yeah. Uh, but I'm absolutely loving what you're doing. Um, and you're getting some nice, like, coloured love hearts coming up as well. So that's all good. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I can do, yeah, I think is this poem. Um, I know a lot of my poems can be quite deep and... This one's deep again, but it has like a positive outcome. So it's like when people cry, a lot of people cry and you're told, um, you know, oh, come here, stop crying, stop crying. But I believe if you need to cry, you've got to cry, you've got to let it out. So I wrote this poem about crying and just being able to express it. It's called Cry. Cry. If you need to cry, let it all out. Let it stream like a river, pour like an ocean, swirl like the sea. Let it form a tsunami. Let it free you from that destruction that caused your emotions to stir. Let your tears form its own storm so that pain can never reoccur. In that downpour, we are told when crying, to stop crying. Stop amplifying your pain. Suppress it. Suppress it. Drown in your puddles that have tears have created in the rain. But suppressing them tears will only release them later down the years, causing a tsunami to strike again. So cry if you need to cry. Set free that pain. Let them tears fall. There's no shame in them glass droplets that fall from your eyes. Cry. Like phoenix you will rise from the very tears that fall from your eyes. Never suppress what naturally flows. Cry, and if crying allows that chapter to close, then cry. That waterfall is tomorrow's ocean. Set free that emotion. It's okay to cry. Thanks. Cool. Yeah, and it's weird, like, when you start crying, people do what they can to stop you crying as soon as possible. Yeah. Sometimes you just need to, yeah. Yeah, sometimes you just got to let it out. <laughs> yeah, totally. It's like a natural yeah. bodily reaction. Like, you got to, yeah, just let it go. Yeah. Um, cool. Beautiful. That was great. Um, I just want to, one last thing I wanted to ask you. Uh, you're from Bradford. Uh, yeah. You're currently based in Bradford? Yeah, yeah. I, I just... Um, I just wondered if how that had impacted on you as a writer, because it seems like there's such a thriving like arts and literary scene at the moment in Bradford. And I know you've been involved, like I said, with Bradford Lit Fest and stuff. Um, and just yeah. your experiences of Bradford, like basically shout about your home city for the next minute or so. <laughs> I'm just curious to know. Yeah. No, I, I really love being a Bradford girl and being from Bradford. I love that. It's very diverse and multicultural. I love that when you come here, you know, everyone just on a vibe and it's a right nice chilled out you know chilled out vibe and you know when people have come from like London or places out of town and they're like Bradford's just so welcoming and it's so different and and I love that people you know come here and they can feel that as well because you know we're all very connected and, and I think that that's a big thing it's about you know helping each other and just yeah just that's what Bradford is it's like a connective type of hub thing yeah it's just yeah it's- it seems to me like um, people feel a lot more comfortable being individuals in Bradford as well. Much as there's a community, like it's a lot easier to express yourself without feeling like you're going to be judged. Like that's yeah, the yeah. impression I get from Bradford anyway. Cool. Buzzing. Yeah. Um, well, you've got lots of uh, digital love hearts there again as well. Um, <laughs> so it's 5-2. Um, have you got one more poem you'd like to share? Yeah. For the session? Yep. Um, okay. So this is called um, A Recipe to Understanding Her. You need an open heart, as open as the universe. Your love needs to be resilient like the darkness of a curse. You need a few drops of sweetener for when she's feeling bitter, or she will frazzle your brain like a 5G transmitter, usually around the full moon or her PMT. She needs a few days of silence where she can be 
her own tidal wave or crashing sea. You will need a course in crash landing when you feel she's becoming too demanding. It's a trigger. She's silently screaming for your attention. Something she's not yet mentioned because she's feeling a little raw or a little insecure and she needs a spoonful of your warmth on her forehead. Your soft lips just resting there. In that silence, she knows you care. She needs a lifetime of truth, not even a droplet of a lie. Always best to reply with the truth. No need to smile. Make her laugh daily. Joe can be silly and act a little crazy. Look in her eyes whenever she looks in yours. Just pause for a few seconds. Embrace this moment. Leave the window to her soul open, like an ocean. Let it pool over your soul and take control of that ego. And know when you let love flow, you will leave that window open to understanding her better. She is the one your heart chose. Treasure that you met her. Thank you. Beautiful. That's such a beautiful point to finish on. I love that. Um, so, SharinaLeeSati.com, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the collection is available to pre-order now through Verve. Um, oh, yeah. Lou, loving all the sea-related references and imagery there. Nice. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's available to pre-order through Verve. If anybody's watching this and hasn't pre-ordered it yet, do pre-order it directly through Verve. Have you got any copies yourself for pre-order? or? Um, not yet, no. It's all just oh. through Verve at the moment. We'll yeah. stick to Verve. Don't do Amazon or anything like that. Do Verve. No. Um, great. Is there any, any last thing you want to plug before the end of the session? or? Uh, no, just thanks so much for the uh, opportunity. It's been amazing. Oh no, thank you. I really, really appreciate you giving up your time and sharing your work with us. Um, you've had a great response on here and I'm sure loads of people will watch you afterwards as well. So, well, I hope to see you in Bradford or Leeds or somewhere in person at some point, but Definitely. until then, take care. Thank you, Sharina. You're you great. Yeah. You. Uh, that was the wonderful Sharina Lee Satie, uh, a debut uh, collection she with uh, Poetry Press and check out Sharina Lee, uh, Lee Satie .com. Uh Yeah, one of Yorkshire's rising stars. Um, I think she's really going to go places. She's fantastic. Thank you all for your lovely comments. Um, and be back here next week, 7.30 to 8 UK time. Got another fantastic guest lined up. I'll see you then. Cheers. Yeah.